All right, so oxidation reduction, remember, are involving the transfer of electrons. So our uh, acronyms was oil rig, which stands for oxidation is loss of electrons, and reduction is gain of electrons. Um, oxidation, of course, when we're losing electrons, we're losing things that are negative. So if we're losing electrons and they're negative, our oxidation number gets more positive. If we're gaining electrons, our uh, oxidation number gets more negative or less positive. Um, the oxidation number is an arbitrary number that we assign it, okay? And there are rules about that, and that's where we're going to have to go to the memory banks, okay? The oxidation state of any free element is zero, including your diatomic. So if I have oxygen gas, its oxidation number is zero. If I have sodium metal, the oxidation number is zero. If it is a free element, meaning how it exists in nature or, or on the periodic table, it's going to be zero, Okay, If it is a monoatomic ion, meaning all by itself, it's going to be the same as its charge. So your group 1 metals, sodium down through francium, their oxidation number is going to be the same as what their charge is, plus 1. Okay? Uh, in compounds, fluorine is always a negative 1. Always, always, always. No exceptions. Fluorine is going to always be a negative 1. Oxygen is usually a negative 2. In most cases, it's a negative 2. Um, there are some exceptions, such as when it's a peroxide, okay, like hydrogen peroxide, then it's a, it's a negative one, okay? Last year, I did say I would tell you. Um, yeah. It's not going to show, it very rarely shows up, and it's usually, it will say in the problem, like, something peroxide, okay? That we, yeah, this is a quiz that if you were in my, if you are in my pre-AP class last year, didn't do so great on, <laughs> okay? Um in covalent compounds, if you have, when it's with a non-metal, hydrogen is usually a plus one. However, metal hydrides, the hydrogen becomes a negative one. So if I had sodium NaH, that would be sodium hydride. In that case, then the hydrogen is a negative one. But usually it's a positive one. These rules that are here are in order of importance. Like, in other words, fluorine always being a negative one trumps any other rule behind it. Okay, when you're looking at the uh, sum of the oxidation states in a compound, if it's a neutral compound, then your sum has to be neutral. So your zeros, your, your positives and your negatives have to add up to zero. If it's a polyatomic ion, then it has to add up to the charge of that polyatomic ion. Okay, so let's practice assigning some oxidation numbers. Okay, so if I have CO2... I'm going to look at the fact that it's telling me that oxygen is normally a negative 2. So oxygen would be a minus 2 as its oxidation state. The fact that I have two of them here, what is my total negative charge? Negative 4. Negative 4. So that means that carbon's oxidation state has to be what? Plus 4. A plus 4. Okay. Sulfur, hexafluoride, we know that fluorine is always a negative 1. But the fact that I have six of them, what does that mean sulfur needs to be here? A plus six. So its oxidation state would be a plus six. Okay? Um, for nitrogen, tri dioxide, nitrogen trioxide, oxygen's a negative two. In this case, what is nitrogen? Plus five because it's negatively charged. Oh, that is on there. Okay, thank you. I didn't see it. I, I wrote, I didn't rewrite it correctly. NO3 minus, which is nitrate, this would be plus 5. Okay? Now, just a word of warning. Um, we never did this in pre-AP Chem, but you can have a fraction for a oxidation state. So don't let, if you ever see that, it's not like breaking the laws of nature. Okay? It can happen. Okay? Well, if there's an example. If you have um, Fe3O4, which is a compound, we know that oxygen is always a negative 2. So, and there's three of them, so it would be like a negative, it would be your iron, in that case it would be a positive 8 uh, thirds. Because remember, we're just showing the transfer of electrons. We're not, these are not, these are arbitrary. These are like ways for us to keep up with it, okay? So, 
it, it happens occasionally. Okay, it happens occasionally. Okay, so that's how you sign oxidation states. Okay, so we need to identify what's oxidized and reduced. Um, some of the verbiage that has been dropped out, and we made you learn this in um, pre AP Chem, and I actually think I'm going to take it out this year, is the term oxidizing agent and reducing agent. We, they don't ask that anymore on the AP exam. Okay, okay so that's probably going to be removed. Okay? Okay. It is just the opposite. So, yeah. I'm trying to uh, align pre AP a little bit closer uh, with AP. Uh, now that I'm not teaching three courses this year, I'm, I'm going to have a little bit of extra time to do that. Okay, I've always taught three courses. So when I in Bay City, I taught all three, so I didn't always have time to do that. Now I have a little extra time. So how much time on my hands now? You can do I assume not. I hope not. I hope they never make me do that. Yeah. Okay. So this is a very easy one, and what the best way and easiest way to recognize the. Uh, a redox reaction is if you have something in its free element state, you know it's and it's not a free element on the other side, you know right off the bat it's a redox. Okay? Because these are both going to be zero, right? Because they're elements. So zero, zero. So we know those in order to be in a compound, something had to be oxidized and something had to be reduced. If you recall from Chem 1, you can't have oxidation without reduction, and they happen simultaneously. It, one's not oxidized, and then the other one's reduced. They happen at the same time. Okay, so aluminum is a monoatomic ion, so it's going to match its charge. So the oxidation state of aluminum in this case is what? Three. Plus three. Okay, and then iodide is a halogen, and it's also monoatomic, and it's with a metal. So what's the what's the oxidation state of iodide in this case? Minus one. Minus one. So aluminum was oxidized or reduced? Uh, Did it gain or lose electrons? Gain. Lost. 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 Aluminum was oxidized. Okay. It lost because it's losing electrons, it becomes more positive. So you might want to go back up there under oil rig where it says oxidation is lost and make yourself a little note. Oxidation number will get more positive, okay? For reduction, it gains electrons, so the oxidation number will get less positive or more negative, however you want to look at that, okay? And so that means that uh, iodine was reduced, and it gained, each one gained one electron, okay? Any questions on that? Does that make, mostly make sense? Ringing a bell? Okay. Okay. Again, we're going to be um, identifying what's oxidized and reduced here. In the first reaction, what's going on? Well, I always, I always go to the first thing I see. Oxygen is a free element, and then it's zero, zero so it's changing. So oxygen is going from a zero char, zero oxidation state to a negative two. So what did it do? It gained. It gained. Okay. So oxygen O2 is reduced. Okay. So what's going on? Which one is going to be oxidized? The lead? Uh, Stay in plus two on both sides, right? The lead. So the lead's not doing anything, right? It's the sulfur. Okay, so that means let's look at the sulfur. Sulfur is going from a negative 2 right here. And what's it over here? No, it's a positive 4 on the other side. So if it's going from a negative 2 to a positive 4, it did what? It lost. And how many electrons did it lose? Yeah, it lost 6 electrons. So it's definitely oxidized. Okay. In the second reaction, what's going on? Um, what's the f look for, always ooh, to make your life? Lead. Yeah, look at the free elements. Zero here, plus two here. So what did it do? It went from a plus two to a zero. So it got less positive, right? Reduction. So lead 
gained two electrons. So it was reduced. Okay, and then what changed? So the oxygen, remember, is a negative two unless it's a peroxide. It's the carbon. Carbon. So it's carbon, because <coughs> carbon dioxide is not peroxide. So carbon's going from a plus two, plus plus two plus to a plus four. So carbon lost two electrons. So it was oxidized. So we, are we good so far? Remember this a little bit? Um, uh -oh. Yes. Okay. Then let's balance these babies. Bouncing redox reactions are my favorite ones to bounce. Absolute favorite. I love them. Absolute 100% favorite. It's like a puzzle. Come on, I've been inactive. It's, there we go. So, in a nutshell, when we're balancing redox reactions, not sure what happened there. Okay. You're going to divide your uh, equations into the half reactions. Oxidation and the reduction. Uh, you balance everything except for hydrogen and oxygen. You always save them for last. Okay? In order to balance any out, any out any oxygen, we add water. Okay? Then, of course, if we're adding water, that throws our hydrogen count off. So the way that we balance hydrogen is adding hydrogen ions, and then you balance your charges by adding electrons. I'm going to walk, I'm just telling you the process, but we're going to do it, of course. And then you have to put your half reactions back together, and you have to, if you don't have the same number of electrons in each half reaction, you have to multiply by an integer to get there to be the same number, okay? If you're an acidic or neutral solution, you, you're done. You cancel out everything, and then you're done. But if it's a basic solution, the last step is add in some hydroxides, okay? So that, if you need to go back and read that to know the steps, there they are. So let's go... Yes. That's balancing, yeah. I don't know what you just said, but okay. Uh, did, when we did it in my class, if you have different color pins, it's very helpful because you can kind of follow your steps. I, well, I can change. I'm, I'm that talented. Yeah. And I'm also going to put a new, new screen up because I can't fit it in there. It just depends. A couple of different colors. If you have different colors, it's good to just do the process. You don't have to by any means. All right, here we go. So we have this reaction. We're going to separate them into our half reactions. So we're going to start with uh, the, man, the permanganate. So we have MnO4 minus going to Mn2 plus. Okay, so that's the one half reaction. The other half reaction is very easy. It's Fe2 plus going to Fe3 plus. <laughs> All right, so let's do the iron because it's the easier one to do first, right? Only thing we have to balance there is the charge, right? We don't have any elements, oxygen or hydrogen or anything to balance. We're just going to balance the charge. So the way that we balance the charge is by adding electrons. So I have a 2 plus on one side, and I have a 3 plus on the other side. So I'm going to need to add one electron. Because unlike a regular uh, normal balanced equation, we got to balance our charges. Should okay, they have put a 1 there? Put a 1 where? Yeah. Like before the electron. Do we need the 1? You don't have to have the 1. Uh -huh. okay. If you just want to put an E, you can. I just, it's a habit. Okay. Um, okay, so that one's done. We're done with that side. Uh, FYI, is that one oxidized or reduced? Reduced. It's oxidized. It's oxidized. <laughs> it's losing an electron. 
It's getting more positive. Oy vey. Okay. Now let's go back to the other one. Okay. So I have MnO4. What do I need to balance? My, mang my manganese is balanced, so I'm good there, but I need to balance my oxygen. I have four oxygen on the reactant side. So what do I need to put on the product side? No, we balance the charge last. It is for water. Thank you, Frank. So now my oxygen is balanced. Let's raise our hands for questions instead of peppering me with them all at one time. Okay? I questions are great, but if you all ask them at once, I cannot. My brain doesn't gets overwhelmed. Okay? So I have, why did I add four water? Because that's the only way I can balance the oxygen. So now I have four oxygen. But now what's not balanced? Hydrogen. hydrogen. So on the other side, how, what do my notes say about balancing hydrogen? What do I add? Hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions. So how many do I need to add to the reactant side? Eight. Yes, ma'am, I do. Eight. Eight hydrogen. So now all of the elements are balanced, but clearly the charges are not. So on the product side, I have 2 plus. So I need my reactant side to be 2 plus. But what is it right now? No, don't tell me what I'm adding. Tell me what the charge is on my reactant side right now. 7 plus. I need it to be 2 plus. So how many electrons should I add? 5. That one is gaining electrons, so it is reduced. So the manganese is being reduced. Now, the next step states that both of the half reactions need to have the same amount of electrons. So what am I going to do to the iron? I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 5. So now, I'm going to rewrite... And I'm going to say 5 electrons plus 8 hydrogen plus an MnO4 permanganate goes to Mn2 plus plus 4 hydrogen, I mean 4 water. And I'm going to rewrite this as 5 Fe2 plus goes to 5 Fe3 plus plus 5 electrons. Now I'm going to add those back together, and I'm going to cancel out what appears on opposite sides. In this case, there's only one thing that appears on both sides, and that is the electrons. electrons. You should always be able to get rid of your electrons. Okay, and now I just rewrite it and add it back together. So 8 hydrogen. Then you did it wrong. And this is an easy one because we really only had to balance one of the half reactions hard. And now we want to go back and double check that we have the same elements on every side, but we also want to double check that our charge is the same on both sides. So add them up to get the same charge on both sides. Then you did it correctly. Okay, now that was in an acidic solution, right? Now let's do a basic solution. Okay, so I want to do, which is this one? Is this one basic? No, the next one's not basic. Uh, to exercise 20 is basic, right? Okay. Before I go on to another exercise, does anybody want to ask any questions on this? Did, did I, first of all, did I go slow enough that you basically understood what I did? Yes. Yes. No, I'm, I'm going to show you a basic. So the redox, if you look at one of the homework papers, it says balancing redox reactions. You have six acidic and six basic. Okay. This was acidic. Acidic or easier? It just means it's in an acidic solution. 
And then basic means it's in a basic solution. But we have to do an extra step if it's basic. So I'm going to show you one now. I'm going to show you one now. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Wait, say that. Wait, say that again. So the charge on each side has to be the same. So to get that charge, you multiply each element's charge and then just add them up. I don't think I'm following what you're saying, but I'm going to tell you why I multiplied by it. So the half reactions, you have to have the same number of electrons exchanged. So in this one, it was five. And this one originally was one. So that means that I needed five of that to happen. So I multiplied by five. Okay? Sometimes it could be two and three. And then I have to, op I have to multiply both of them by an integer. It just so happened that one electron was exchanged in the second one. Um, I don't know if the next one, if it's going to be... Uh, the next one, I think, will be an example of having to do both. So let's, we're going to do exercise 20, which is a, uh, I don't know if it says it's a basic solution, but I'm telling you it's a basic solution. Does it say it is? In a basic solution, yeah, it says it is. Okay? Yeah, that's what I looked at that. Yes? If they don't tell you what it is, you assume it's acidic. Because they have to, if it's basic, they have to say this is a basic solution. Otherwise, you don't know to do that last step. Okay? So let's do exercise 20. Oh, yes, go ahead. I want to ask, why did you multiply by the 5, the first initial step? Right here? Yes. Because, because this reaction has 5 electrons that it needs to gain, so it's got to get 5 electrons from the oxidation. So it's, I have to have 5, basically I have to have 5 iron to be able to have that. Okay? Okay, let's do exercise 20 now, which is basic. All right, so we have Ag plus Cn minus plus oxygen going to AgCn2. So we're going to do the easy one first, which is Ag plus Cn minus going to AgCn2 minus. So what's, yes? Have you sent out a remind yet? I just kind of forgot if I signed up or not. Uh, you, have I sent out a remind? Yeah, the one about like the phone lab or something. Uh, oh, yeah, I sent one the other day saying you didn't have a quiz this week. I moved it to next week. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so what's the first thing I need to balance here? Cyanide. Cyanide. Well, if remember, if you have a polyatomic, treat it as one unit and just balance it. Sorry. So I'm going to put a 2 here, right? So now what does that do to my charge? So I have a negative 2 on the reactant side and a negative 1 on the product side, so add an electron. Okay? So they were good there. Huh? Never mind. Did I put it on the wrong side? Yeah, no, the silver is solid. Look at it. Silver is solid. I feel like I'm doing something wrong because they're telling me it's going to have four silver, and that doesn't seem right. Okay, so the, it, the O2 doesn't tell us what it's going to go to, but how do we balance oxygen? Water. 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 So we're going to put two water over here. Okay, so what does that do to my hydrogen? No, we don't add hydroxide yet. We add hydrogen. Okay. Okay. Let's just go through the process, okay? How about instead of asking questions in the middle of it, let's go through the whole process and then see if you still have that question. Okay. okay. So now we have four hydrogen. So what do we need to do with our electrons? Add four electrons. Okay. So now the second reaction has four electrons. The first, I forgot to change color, sorry. 
only has one, so what are we going to need to do here? Multiply by four. So let's rewrite everything. Okay, so we're going to have four silver plus eight cyanide yields four AgCN2 plus four electrons. Okay. All right, resuming. So we have that side balance. Let's rewrite the other one. Four electrons plus four hydrogen plus O2 yields two H2O. And let's mark out what we can mark out. The four electrons. I need to do one where we mark out other stuff because I don't want that to confuse y'all. Okay, so we rewrite 4Ag plus, plus 8Cn minus, plus 4 hydrogen plus O2 yields 4Ag C, oops, forgot the C, N2 minus, plus 2H2O. Now, this is a basic solution, so can we have free hydrogen floating around? No. Absolutely not. So the way that you do a solution when it's basic is however... This is important, you should listen. However many hydrogens you have, you add that many hydroxides to both sides. What you do to one side, you gotta do the other. So we're gonna add four hydroxides to both sides. Okay, what happens when you add hydrogen and hydroxide together? What do you make? Water. So here we're gonna make four water. Okay. But now, look right here, I have four water here and I have two water here. They appear on opposite sides, so we're going to cancel out these water and we're going to change this to two. And now we rewrite the entire thing, including the hydroxides that don't cancel out on the uh, product side. So our final balanced equation is going to be 4Ag plus, plus 8Cn minus plus two water, plus O2, yields four AgCN, plus four hydroxide. And that's how you do it if it's basic. It's just a G. Oh, no, it's not plus. I'm adding the plus. That's just habit. That's okay. Yeah, that is total habit. Did I do that throughout? Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. Alex, if you're watching this video, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm, it's just such a habit for me to write AG plus and not. It's The beginning of the problem, it's, it's solid, so it does not have a charge. That is my B. I took out the plus sign on all the silver because I screwed up. It was only in there, like... Yeah, I just, it's a habit, like, to write AG+, plus because we're not usually dealing with the solid, okay? Any questions? Um, do we have time? I can work one more if you want. I can, I can work, we can do exercise 19. 19? If you were, hey, if you were copying down what I did, go mark off all the plus signs on the silver because that, that were, they were not supposed to be there. That was my mistake. There's, it's solid silver in the beginning. So mark them out. Okay, this is exercise 19. We'll do an extra one. Um, we have, we're going to break it into our half reactions. And our half reactions here are going to be uh, the, the dichromate. Shh. going to the uh, chromium ion. And their other half, re half reaction is the ethanol, which is the C2H5OH, and it's going to a CO2. We're going to, at this point, we're going to leave out those hydrogens and those uh, water because we're, it's going to end up self-balancing that for us. Okay, so we're going to leave those out. Okay. So let's do the dichromate one first. What is the very first thing I need to balance? The chromium, yes. 
last year when we were balancing these, that's what people would leave out, and then it throws their charge off. Okay, so we're going to balance the chromium. So now we have two chromium. Now we'll balance the oxygen. So I need how many water on this side? Seven? Okay. So now I have my oxygen balance. So how many hydrogen do I need to balance? Fourteen. Okay. So... So how many electrons? So it's actually not 14 plus on the reactant side. It's actually 12 plus because I have a negative 2 on that dichromate. Yeah, you just put 14, not 14. Oh. There, now it's correct. But the charge is still 12 plus over there, right? Okay. And what's the charge on the other side? 6 plus. So, I need to add how many electrons? Six. six. So, I'm going to add six electrons. And I have not pre-worked this one out, so hopefully we do this right. Okay? So, for the ethanol side, what do I need to balance first? Carbon. Carbon. So, we're going to put a two right here. Okay? Uh, I have four oxygen on the product side. I only have one. Please be quiet. Okay, thank you. So I have four oxygen on the product side, and I only have one. So what do I need to do over here? Three water. And now how much total, sorry, it fades off whenever it's, I'm still for too long. So I have how many total hydrogen on the reactant side here? Twelve. Twelve is correct. Don't forget about the H right over here. So I have twelve. So I need how many over here? 12. Let's remember to write the hydrogen this time. Okay. So neutral on the uh, reactant side here, but 12 plus. So how many electrons do I need? 12. Okay. So let me switch colors. So I'm going to multiply the top one by 2, right? So let's rewrite. So we're going to have 12 electrons plus, wow, 28, right? 28 hydrogen plus 2 of the dichromates. Four chromium plus 14 water. And then I'm going to add that to 3H2O plus a ethanol, 2CO2, plus 12 hydrogen, plus 12 electrons. Crossing out the electrons first, that's the easiest, but we're going to be needing to cross out some hydrogens and some waters here, right? Yeah. Okay, so I have 12 here, so 28 minus 12 is how much? 16. So we're going to do this. I like to circle it. That's just me, so I know that I canceled it out. That's just, you don't have to do that. It's just my habit. And then I have three water here. So that's going to become 11. So if I crossed everything, I can cross out. My final equation will be 16 hydrogen plus two dichromates, plus an ethanol, okay, now that, would, that one I believe, did it say it was acidic or it just didn't say anything, okay? So if it didn't say anything, we assume it's acidic. But just for grins, let's also do it as if it was basic. So that way you have both. Because I feel like we should do another basic one before y'all go. So now we're going to say if basic, if basic, what would we do here? Add 16 hydroxides, right? So this would be acidic, but if we're going to we're just going to do an extra step to practice basic. So if it were acidic, we would add 16 hydroxides. This would become 
16 water. So then we would cross out this water and change this to 5. So for basic, it would be 5 water plus 2 dichromates plus an ethanol okay any questions absolutely I am gonna stop the video so that people don't have to keep listening to it but I